Docs can completely transform your data analysis to the next level. But let's be real, learning it, it's not easy. But what if I told you there's one concept that make everything click? Understand how DAX operate is the key to unlock its full potential. Master this and you open door to a whole new level of data analysis power. Don't get stuck. Let's turn that confusion into confidence. Hi, my name is Lynn and I'm a senior data analyst and automation expert with experience in banking and logistic industry. And welcome back to my channel where we turn data chaos into clarity. This video is part of my data analytics roadmap series where we help a growing property chain, Excel property, to analyze their messy timesheet data. So far, we've set clear objective for the analysis. We also explore Power Pivot interface and learn key DAX concepts like calculated measure and calculated column. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I highly recommend to start from the beginning because we're building up knowledge step by step. Now for today's video, we'll start warming up by writing some simple docs. Then we'll dive into evaluation context, the fundamental concept that explains how docs work behind the scene. Once we understand that, I'll introduce you to the queen of docs, calculate function, which allow you to adjust how DAX interpret your data. And finally, we'll explore how evaluation concepts behave in a more complex scenario where multiple filters are in place. Now before we start, make sure to download the data file with the link in the description. There's also a timeline that helps you to navigate throughout a section. Please feel free to pause, rewind the videos to follow along as your own space. If you missed any of the earliest videos, don't forget to check them out, as each episode is built up from the last one. If you find this video helpful, please smash the like button at any time and subscribe to my channel to not miss out on any of future data analytics episodes. Ready to master the secret of DAX? Let's dive into it! We're gonna move on to analyze a timesheet table. So instead of creating a new pivot table, I'm gonna reuse the existing pivot table. So copy the existing pivot, go to the new calculation sheet and paste it right here. Now we want to focus only on the timesheet table. So I'm gonna kick out all the dimension and the measures and remove the employee table from the active tab. Now go to all and activate the timesheet table into the active tab. Go back to the active tab and here we have the timesheet table. All right, now we're ready to do the analysis on the timesheet table. Let's warm up by calculating some simple measures. I want to know the total number of workday, holiday, and sickness. How do I calculate that? So what I can do is to perform the count on the status column. So let's do that. Right-click and add a measure. I'm going to call this status count. And I'm going to use the count tab function because the status column is classifying as text and check the formula, no error, it's look good. Now format it to number, use the separator and no decimal and hit okay. And I have my measure created here. Now simply drag and drop it to the value area and we have the total count of the status. Now in order to know the count for each type of status, we need to drag and drop the status column into the row area and we have the result we wanted. Now, the question is, how do DAX know what to calculate? How does it give you the results that you want? Well, this is thanks to something called evaluation context, which determine how data is filtered and calculate as a result impact DAX formula. Let's explore this concept in detail.
there are two types of evaluation contexts. The first one is filter context, which is created by a slicer, filter, column, or row dimension. Filter context help to determine which data is included in the calculation. Let me show you what I mean. So let's bring up the Power Pivot data model window real quick. So go to data, data model, and manage data model. Now, the filter context of the holidays in this pivot table is when the status is equal to holiday, meaning that how pivot engine will apply the filter on the timesheet table and filter it down to holiday only. Once the filter context is performed, the second evaluation context, row context, kick in. The row context is created by performing the same calculation row by row by row throughout the entire filtered dataset. In our example, our calculation is the count of the status column. So when row context kick in, this DAX measure will start counting the number of records repeatedly until the end of the entire filters table. And as a result, we've seen 448 records. Now, the same concept apply for other scenarios like sickness. So the filter context will first filter it down to sickness and row context kick in and start the count. In short, filter context filter the relevant data needed for the calculation then row context apply the calculation row by row by row until the end of the entire filter table. And together, they form the evaluation context that allow every single DAX function to be calculated and give us the desired results. So now that we understand what evaluation context is, we're ready to meet the most powerful DAX function that allow us to modify the evaluation context and increase the flexibility in writing DAX formulas. Let me introduce you to Calculate. So far, we've used external filter to dictate the filter context of a calculated measure, meaning that the filter context is coming from outside of a DAX measure. It can come from columns or row dimensions or through filter or slicers. In our case, the filter context coming from the row dimensions of a status column. Now, we're going to use calculate to modify the filter context, meaning that we're applying an internal filters within the DAX measure. All right, now we're going to find out the actual holiday sickness and workday without the use of the status column. And let's write our DAX formula in the Power Pivot user interface. So I'm gonna call our measure at holiday column equal. And we're going to start our formula with calculate. The first argument of calculate is the expressions. That is what we want to calculate. And we already calculate the status counts. So we're going to use that as the first argument. So status counts. The second argument is the filter context that we want to apply on the expressions. And we want the status column from the timesheet table to be equal to holiday, close bracket and hit enter. And we have the result calculated. And that's exactly the same as we would have the filter contract from the row area. And this measure calculated the results on its own. Easy, right? Now let's repeat this for sickness and holiday. So I'm just gonna quickly copy this. Go to the next cells and paste it. Now change the name, sickness, here as well. And do the same for workday. And we have our actual holiday sickness and workday measure created with the correct results. 
without the need of an external filter. All right, let's quickly format all the measure. Still got thousand separator, no decimal number. All right, let's close the power pivot window. Now back to Excel, we're gonna drag and drop the new measure into the value area. I can see the measure here. And what's going on with this measure? The actual holiday results repeated for all of the status. Why is that? To explain this, we need to again go back to the fundamental of DAX, the evaluation context. This time, we'll add a little bit more complexity in it. Let's take a look at the evaluation context for the holiday line. The first step is the filter context. We need to make a distinction between internal filter context and external filter context. So when DAX evaluate this formula, internal filter context is apply first. In this case, we dictate within the formula that we want the status to be holiday. External filter context is applied next. It's come from the row dimension. And again, we want the status to be holiday. So the final filter context results in the status equal holiday. Now the second step is the row context. It is simply the count of the status throughout the filter table, which gives us the final result of 448 days. Now, let's take a look at the evaluation context for the sickness line. Internal filter context remain the same. Status is holiday. What about the external filter context? The status is now changed to sickness. Now, because we've already restricted the status to be holiday before in the internal filter, the table is already filtered out to holiday. We cannot add additional external filter from the same column, and therefore the external filters in this case is being disregarded. And the final filter contact result in status equal holiday. Once the filter contact is formed, row contact starts the count from the filtered table, which gives us the same results of 448 days. And the same story applied to the working scenario. And that's why you see the actual holiday measure results in 448 days, repeatedly regardless of what the status is. Now, this is the scenario where both internal and external filter context came from the same column, the status column. What happened when the filter context came from multiple columns? Let's find out. I'm gonna kick the status column out and add the employee columns in the row dimension. And we can see that the measure work as expected. Let's take a closer look at what's going on under the hoods of the formula. Again, let's revisit the evaluation context for the first employee. Now, the internal filter dictate that the status must be holiday. Then, external filter come in, this time from a different column. The employee ID is equal to 1. So, the final filter context will be status equal to holiday and employee ID equal to 1. Now, from that filter set of data, row context start the count and give us the result of 29 days. The same principle applies to the second employee and so on. And that's explained why we get the holiday days for each employees and not the total days counts like in the status count measures. So to recap, the fundamental of any DAX formulas is the evaluation context, which consists of filter context, and row context. There are many DAX formula that allow us to modify the filter context within a measure, and calculate is certainly the most popular function. Filter context can come internally 
from within the DAX formula and or externally from outside of the formula. Remember, when DAX formula evaluates, internal filter always has the priority over external filter. That is why when both internal and external filters come from the same column, internal filter override external filters and become the final filter context. On the other hand, when internal and external filter come from different column, the filter context is the combination of both internal and external filter. All right, let's head back to Excel and add all the required measures in. I don't need the row dimension, so let's kick that out and adjust the width a little bit. And we have all our date measures created simply by tweaking the filter context using calculate formula. As you can see, DAX allow you to perform flexible calculation tailored to your specific requirements. Today, we explore the evaluation context, one of the most crucial concepts in DAX. You learn how it influences the result of your DAX formula. This foundational concept is critical for any advanced analysis and it will set you up for success as we move deeper into DAX. We also meet the queen of DAX formula, Calculate. It is a function that allows you to control filters from within the formula, making DAX calculation much more powerful and efficient. One thing to note here is DAX formula can get complicated very quickly if you don't structure it in the right way. So in the next videos, we'll dive into how to write complex DAX formula while keeping the goals clean, understandable, and easy to debug. This will be the key for handling more advanced data challenges. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and share it with others who might find these videos useful. And please leave feedback in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any of the latest episodes where we continue to deep dive into advanced DAX formula. See you in the next videos.